Good morning. Welcome to the 27th annual Galuccio Associates Sports Breakfast. <laughs> I've noticed that we've, be, we've started later every year. I think it's because all of you have gotten a little older. Tony? I'm not old. Steve? But I want you to think about 27 years, and Whitey, I was, I was thinking about it. I think we started in 1994 with a fundraiser at the VFW with Royal, pa Royal Pastry, Pan Pizza, and Chicken Wings to raise money for Pop Warner. And then we formed the 501c3. We had the idea to honor youth sports volunteers who really had never been recognized before. Um, many of you who know coaching is sort of a, a it's not sort of, <laughs> It is a thankless uh, exercise, and we sat around thinking of the people that had helped us as kids and played such pivotal roles in our lives, and we said, I wonder if we did an event, would people show up to thank the, the folks who meant so, so much to us? And Louie, I think like the first year, I, I think we had 300 people here. And so obviously, you know that Cambridge is an amazing community, and you all know that youth sports is a huge part of it. So let's all be drum majors for that message, because without youth sports in Cambridge, we, we wouldn't be as close as we are. We wouldn't have the friendships that we have. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce Arielle Spivey. She's gonna, a, as it's tradition, we're gonna uh, start the program with the national anthem. So if everyone could rise and welcome Arielle. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the rain we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Started, I do want to introduce um, State Senator Sal D. Domenico and State Representative Marjorie Decker for being here. I, and I'm just going to introduce Fred Fantini. I don't even think he's here, but I've missed his introduction like 20 years in a row, so Fred Fantini. At this time, uh, oh, Paul Toner's here. Thank you, Paul. City Councilor Toner. Uh, as you all know, this is a family operation. Um, it's a family operation. So I want to thank my mother because she's been the treasurer, kept track of the books, written the checks uh, since we started, and we, we could not do it without her. She has to be somewhere um, at, at 11.30 today. So I, wanna I want Tony to present. She hates this. Tony's going to present her with some flowers. If everyone could just say thank you to my mother for keeping this going. At this time, I want to introduce someone who's been with us from the beginning, as busy as he is on comedy circuit and doing movies and everything else. He always is here for this event. I wanted him to have to bring the flowers to my mother because I'm quite certain that he's out of breath right now. Tony V, come on up, buddy. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was, uh, that was great. That helped me toward my uh, 10,000 steps for this year. It's a year, right? 10,000 steps a year you're supposed to get in? Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, that, that's about 
uh, 30 steps right there. So, uh, nice. To, I don't know why I'm invited back here every year. You guys don't seem to like me, and I have nothing to add. I don't, I don't have any inspirational words for the young people. Uh, I couldn't even figure out parking. Uh, so it's, did you try to figure out parking out there? It, you got to have a degree from uh, one of the fine colleges in Cambridge. And I'm assuming there's one. Where's Renee? Renee, your sister? No. No. Wait, Renee? Wife. Whitey? What? Whitey's anyway, wife. no, I try to park. She's in charge of parking. This is going to just be a rant. She's still out there. No, I just, I try to park at the thing, at the, out on the street. And uh, you got to put your credit card number in, and I know, but I had to drop my wife off for a hair appointment. These people aren't interested. No, no, she's over getting her hair done right now. She'll look beautiful, and I will notice it. If I have any words of inspiration for the young men in the audience, if you're connected to somebody who gets a haircut, please notice it. It'll add years to your life. <laughs> and to the, to the question of does this dress make any part of me look bigger than it should, the answer is always no. You look fantastic. Uh, no, no, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pick up now. This is where it picks up. <laughs> uh, <it's, laughs> It really is hard for me to do these things because I'm a foul mouth uh, nightclub entertainer and you guys are very nice people and should not be subject and there's children here. You know, this is this is a bad thing to do to me. And I love Anthony because he asks me every year and I every year I go, I'm gonna say no this year because it's painful. And then he goes, You wanna come? And I'll go, Yeah, okay. I mean, what's it matter if you guys don't come to one of my shows? I guess it does matter. Maybe I should try a little bit harder. Uh, but if I had any words of wisdom for the young people in the audience, they would be, uh, don't drink. That's it. Don't drink anything. It's way overrated. Hydration is the, is the problem with a lot of the problems in the world. People say you can never be too hydrated. Oh, yes, you can. You could drown yourself. You know, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if you laughed. I think they, we explained I was a nightclub entertainer, right? Yeah, okay. It's good. I was uh, recently, oh, this is what I wanted to tell you. I'm glad the pandemic's over. Are you? Yeah, because they, they keep telling us it's not. And then we just collectively went, oh, yeah, it is. We just decided to quit the pandemic, which I love about society. And here's how I know the government's done with this. They're now trusting us to test ourselves at home. That's, you know they're done when that happens. They go, you know all this, the hard stuff we left the medical professionals? You've had two and a half years with it. I think you can handle it now. Here's what you do. Go to CVS, grab a box of stuff, take it home and stick it up your nose. Uh, look for some lines. You might have COVID. You might be pregnant. We don't know. <laughs> Pick whichever one's least offensive to you and go about your day. And here's, I was traveling some, right? And here's how I know people are done with the, with the pandemic. People now feel free to cough openly in public again. I was in line at the airport. There was a woman next to me just goes, ah. Well, I guess I just did it then. I probably shouldn't have. Uh, but that was more of a demonstrative cough is what it was. But she just, she just coughed right at me. She goes, it's okay. It's not COVID. I go, yeah, I don't care what it is. I don't want it. I don't know you. And I, I, I had to use the men's room at the airport, which you only do if you have to. You know what I mean? You have you ever seen? Well, half the population hasn't, but believe me, it's not a good situation. You don't know who's been in and out, you know. And I'm going in, and uh, they have a QR code on the men's room. They want you to leave a review of the men's room at the airport. If every review 
isn't, it was either this or soil myself. I don't know anything about reviews. And I cleaned that up for you guys right there, right? Right in the middle of the joke. I didn't say exactly what I was thinking, so. So it's all good. So I, I just want to, uh, you know, as always, I, I will be here as long as Anthony has the courage to keep asking me. Um, you know, and being, uh, you, I go, oh, I got an issue. Uh, Matinon is closing. I, I went to Matinon for two years until they threw me out. And it's taken them 60-something years to finally go, yeah, we're done with this place. Are we sad about it? Yeah. Was it still a school? Yeah, yeah, not good. It's not good? No, they are good. No, they're good. Yeah, yeah but they became private. They didn't have the nuns, right? Did they still have nuns? No, not nuns. They didn't still have a Sister ATN, my French teacher, did she? No. She was an awful person. <laughs> she once told me that we lost the hockey finals because God wasn't on our side because I was flunking French. And just to prove her right, I went on to flunk French three more times. Yeah, uh, and it's not that I didn't learn anything. Oué la bibliothèque. Yeah, c'est tout droit, tout y va tout sweet. Oui, il faut que j'aille chercher un livre. That is the sum total of my French knowledge right there. I can ask where the library is, and get there. I couldn't read anything, because it's in French. I'm not a big reader, you should read too. My wife tried to get me to read over the pandemic, and I'm not a reader. I, I don't say that with any pride whatsoever. I just, I can read, don't get me wrong. I know not to drink bleach. <laughs> and uh, I can brush my teeth, you know, which is what I think you need reading for, you know. But my wife says to me, you should read the classics like you're supposed to in high school, and you'll get a reappreciation for reading. She says, why don't you read Moby Dick? As, and so, you know, I said, you mean the white whale where the guy gets roped to it at the end and goes down and dies? And she goes, yeah. I go, well, why would I read that? I already know what happens. <laughs> so then I tried reading Moby Dick. Has anyone done it? Did you? Yeah, it's an awful book. That's the part no one will tell you. It's a terrible book. I read eight pages. Eight whole pages I read. In eight pages, a guy walked out of one building and into another. Eight pages. I don't got this kind of time. We get out to sea, I'm going to be bored to tears. All right, I got to wrap this up, don't I? Yeah, I, I know I'm doing better than I usually do. No one's left. That's usually, that's usually a sign if no one leaves that I'm, that I'm doing fine. Uh, my wife, oh, I got a wife. Uh, I do, we've been married happily, I'm told, for 30 years. Uh, yeah. Although, uh, I'm starting to doubt a little bit because she's uh, watching almost exclusively the Hot and Murder Your Husband shows. You know, uh, 2020, and those shows, she go, and she'll ask me to sit with her and watch. I go, no, I'm not giving you any ideas. But I do check if she up my insurance policy. That seems to be a tip-off. If they bring, get more insurance on you, you're heading south. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and, they, and she'll sit and she go, what do you think? I'll go, uh, the wife did it. She go, no, no, there's a twist. I go, yeah, yeah, the wife hired someone to do it. That's the twist. Okay, that was gonna be my big close, but no, I'm not gonna leave you like that. I wouldn't do that to you, you're nice people. And, you, and you're here, so. All right, what, what I, oh, oh, okay, this is the one. Yeah, no, this is the one that'll get you. Uh, I don't know if I told this story before, it's sports related, which I think you'll enjoy. Uh, I played softball in my adult life, uh, slow pitch, comedians league. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just so you know how comedians think. We played at ten o'clock on a Tuesday night. That's when we're most comfortable. And uh, well into my sixties, I, I know I look good. Uh, 
we played softball, and uh, I one time, uh, this is about perseverance. I one time struck out playing slow pitch softball. There was no worse feeling if you were any kind of an athlete at all than to strike out playing slow pitch softball. I don't think some of you understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, have you done it? No, no. yeah, yeah, no human should, right? Like, Buck will, I did it. Buck will attest to this, right? Uh, at the pro level, fast pitch, you know, major league. If you can do your job a third of the time, you're, you're pretty good, right? 300 batting averages is really good. In slow pitch, it's, you, you can hit 750, 800, because, you know, a fastball comes at you like this, and a slow pitch softball comes at you like this. Do you understand what I'm saying? At the height, at the pinnacle of a slow pitch softball, you could decide to change bats. <laughs> so anyway, but I, but here's the thing. I, I, I will leave you with a very uh, inspirational quote. Uh, the world doesn't care how many times you get knocked down, as long as you get up one more time. And that's all I got. That's pretty good. As all of you know, we get a, this, this organization has been supported by different folks um, since the beginning, but one of the people that's been there, he's my best friend and he's been there for me throughout my life, and I know he's been there for most of you. Nobody inspires Cambridge kids more than uh, this, this person. So I want to introduce Whitey to come up. He's gonna, he's gonna, He's, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna introduce uh, our our first recipient, Leroy Gibson. All right. So this breakfast, these gentlemen on the left here, I've collectively known them for over a hundred years. Like that's legit. I mean, I don't know what that says about me and my age or them and theirs, but it's been. It's, it's like an all-star team for me today with these gentlemen. And, um, and they're all connected as well, which th this is a, a really good day for Galuccio Associates. So I'm going to start off by reading, and it's not going to stop there, but I'm going to read Leroy's bio. <coughs> Leroy is, uh, he's, uh, won the Youth Sports Volunteer Award. Leroy began his work with Cambridge Kids in 1996 at the Gately Youth Center where he helped facilitate a teen basketball league. Having grown up in the towers at North Cambridge, anybody? North Cambridge, NC? Okay. He understood the kids in NC and had a personal attachment to their success. After working in the skills and drills program, he began a lifelong commitment to kids by co-founding the first Cambridge-based AAU program in 2001. Anybody know the name of that? Anybody play for it? GBL, no, this was, this was the GBL Lions. This was the GBL Lions, but Cambridge Pride is in there and we'll get to that. Um, uh, Leroy co-founded the beloved Cambridge Pride and also served a, a founding board of directors. All of us know the impact that these two programs have had on Cambridge youth basketball. Leroy has spent countless hours in camps and clinics, has been a staple in youth basketball. We are fortunate that Leroy is now the student success coach at the Cambridge Extension Program. Leroy is married to Onika Gibson, and they have been blessed. Onika Gibson? Yes. Hey. And they have been blessed with two daughters, Nakara and Sianna. Thank you, Leroy. So, not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm going to off script for a second. So, I met Leroy when I was director of one of the youth centers in the city, and Leroy was, he was that, that kind of guy that wanted to be involved in everything. He was a leader in his heart, and he showed it with all of his actions. Um, Leroy wanted to just, like, everybody was playing local basketball, and you'll hear about this a little later on when we talk about Mr. Harris, but uh, he wanted to travel. He wanted to get his Cambridge crew and go out there and play against the best. The kids over in Boston, the kids, this is really before like 
legitimate AAU teams. This was really like my hood against your hood. And he would find, he would make sure, uh, Mr. Harris would make sure to connect. And they would take their, they would take their crew and they would go into Boston, and a lot of times they would beat the brakes off them. And not only that, but they had to kind of run back over the bridge because they did beat the brakes <laughs> off them. Um, but Leroy is a dedicated family man. He is committed to the kids of this city in so many different ways. Uh, as you heard, he works uh, at the Extension Program, which, which is a program for kids who uh, they don't necessarily conform or fit into the regular high school, and this is, this is the group of kids that he chose to work with, um, because that's where his heart is. So without any further ado, I want to present you Mr. Leroy Gibson. Oh man, thank you for um, the well words. The, those are beautiful words right there, Whitey and uh, Gluchio Associates. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, good morning. Um, this is a humbling experience, right? I've been doing um, youth sports now for about 27 years, and um, I'm not well into receiving awards. I'm a, I'm a low key type of guy. I like to fall back and just let my work speak for itself. Um, so there's two things that actually, you know, why this is humbling is, is one, because of that. And the second is, um, you know, it takes a village, as they say, to be able to get to where you are. And I have a village of people um, who this award actually, I believe, speaks to more than just to myself. Um, and I'm gonna start off by thanking my mother, um, Nisi Gibson. Yeah. So, Moms is probably the most grittiest person I know. She has the most tenacity, perseverance, resilience, and her love for sports is out of this world. For Christmas this year, she asked for two things. She asked for a Matthew Judon jersey and a Marcus Smart jersey, and she got both. <laughs> Every Sunday, our dinners as a family are catered around Sunday football. And this has been going on for about the last 25 years. There's a few people in here who have been to the house for dinner who can attest to that. That's the type of person she is, and she instilled that in me. So moms, this award's for you. <laughs> Secondly is um, three people, three special people. My wife, Onika, my daughter, Nakari, and Siana. Um, they have endured all of the late dinners, me coming in late, food cold, sitting in the microwave, having to give young, um, young men rides home with them inside the car. Um, sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's sacrificing family vacations because I may be in Albany, New York for a week or I may be in um, New Jersey for a weekend with student athletes from the city. Um, so without you all, um, this wouldn't be possible. You all are my biggest fans. You all are my biggest cheerleaders. And I love you all to the moon and back. This speech is for you. Um, there's three people I don't see here um, that I'd like to acknowledge. One, my cousin, Nakruma Jones, a past honoree of Galuccio and Associates. Um, that's my co-pilot. Um, Everything that we've started, whether it was the Greater Boston Lions, as you heard of earlier, back in 2001, um, to the Cambridge Pride, to me going on and coaching college ball, even him recommending that I retire from coaching college ball so I can sit back and enjoy my daughter, play her games. Um, he's, he's been inspirational in this awards for him as well. Um, there's also Michelle Farnham and Paul Ryder. Um, Michelle Farnham and Paul Ryder. <laughs> Michelle Farnham and Paul Ryder are um, two instrumental pieces in why the Cambridge Pride developed. I don't think many people know 
Um, Nakruma and I, for the work that we was doing with the GBL, got a phone call one day from Michelle Farnham. And she's like, hey, listen, I, I love what you all are doing. You all are doing a great job. However, there's a problem in the city right now. There are a lot of middle school age boys who are disengaged in the community youth centers. They are partaking in activity in the community that has the police department on high alert. Um, and schools, the school, the kids inside the schools aren't doing the best academically. Please figure out a way, whatever it is, come up with a proposal, send it, us to, um, send it to us, and let's see what we can make happen. We wrote the proposal, and the rest is history. Um, we had the Cambridge Pride, which is still running. Um, it's a beautiful program. I believe it's probably one of the best programs um, in terms of basketball that this city has, um, and it's still going. Um, so thank you to Michelle Farnham and Paul Ryder, who are now here. Um, yeah, thank you. Lastly, and I'm going to be quick, there's a bunch of coaches that I would love to, you know, break down. A lot of people that volunteered, but there's two people in particular that I want to recognize, and they're both past honorees as well. I don't know how y'all got this before me, but that is what it is. Shots fired. I was on my timbo, you know what I mean? But um, Vlad Pierre and Gio Rodriguez. These two, these two young men are stalwarts in the community. They are leaders. Um, I'm, I'm proud to know that of the two programs, they are the only two coaches that coached in the um, GBL as well as the Cambridge Pride. Um, they were the successors. I was the inaugural um, director for the first seven years. They were the successors for um, the program and, and took it and made it grow added young ladies, which I fought for. So I thank both of you all, and this award is for you as well. Keep doing what you do. Um, lastly, to the 400 plus GBL alumni, um, doing great things, the 675 plus and still counting and growing Cambridge Pride alumni, this is for you. To all of the um, honorees, congratulations. It's well deserved, and thank you. The real reason it took so long is, first of all, Gio and Vlad only spoke for two minutes. You went six, so I wanted you to be later on. No, all kidding aside, I know a lot of young people talk about how um, politically active you are now. Well, back when we were doing it, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have emails. We knocked on people's doors and asked for them to support us. And Leroy is one of the first people, along with the Maskells and some other people that I grew up with, that believed in me. Because when you're trying to break into the political system, nobody wants you. They want to keep things just as it is. And Whitey and I went out and got everyone that wasn't on the radar. And Leroy and I knocked a lot of doors together in Ringe Towers. And I'll never forget that. I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm so glad you're at the Extension School doing the work you're doing. We have your back. Wherever you go, we go. You got it. I also, I also want to introduce City Councilor Burhan Nazim. Uh, stand up. Paul, why don't you stand up too if he's to Say hi to Burhan. He's, he, he's, being, he's being slowly groomed as a youth sports advocate, so keep your eye on him. We're going to hold you to that. Thank you for being here. Hey, everyone, we're, we're going to approach $300,000 in donations at the end of this year. We've gone from... 5,000 to 10 to 15 to 20, we're now, we're now probably at 30, 35,000 a year, so let's keep this rolling. On that note, um, if you've ever seen me at Celtics games, the only reason you've seen me at Celtics games is because I sit next to somebody who looks exactly like Jay Leno. And that person is here today. I want to give you a big round of applause. He's a big sponsor of this event, Mark Rupini and former Buffalo Bill. And it's, oh, okay, hey, whoever's leaving, stay, Buckley's, Buckley's got, he doesn't know what he's going to get out of me at each game, because one game, I'm telling people he played for the Buffalo Bills, and drumming him up, and the next minute, I'm telling everyone he's Jay Lano, so it's no, it's no fun going with me. Before we do Paul Abreu, which I'm very excited about, I want to have our good friend, uh, sports writer, sports commentator, and former Cambridge Babe Ruth coach, Steve Buckley, come up. Come on up, Steve.
What the former mayor is uh, leaving out is that he forgot to introduce me, because usually I speak after Tony, then I make a joke about Tony, and life goes on. But I have some sort of prepared remarks, but before I get to those, uh, and I swear to God, I forget your name. Marjorie, what's the young man's name next to you? Greg Cooper. Greg Cooper. Greg Cooper is important uh, to my reason for being here today, because the best part about being at this breakfast every year is that I get to meet with my crowd, my city. I was born in Cambridge. My father was born in Cambridge. My great-grandfather and my grandfather came down from Halifax in the 1880s, so, so there's, there's all this history uh, that, that's inside me of Cambridge. But, and I'll, Greg, Greg right? Okay, I'll get to you. What? Greg Cooper. Greg Cooper. I'll get to you in one second. So I grew up in mid-Cambridge. I went to Longfellow School, Prospect Street. I was, my, my family owned a house on Fayette Park when oh. I was born. Uh, Greg lives on Fayette Street, which is the jumping off point to this. But So a few years ago, do any of you know the coffee shop Burismo on Broadway in Cambridge? So that used to be Hubley's. It was an auction house when I was a kid. And, and we used to play sponge ball in the courtyard at Longfellow School. And if you really could get a hold of one, and only a few could, Peter Fong, Paul Monagle, that you could hit a sponge ball all out of the courtyard across the street, and we would say, oh my God, it hit it off the roof of Hubley's. And the reason I mention that is that when Burismo opened several years ago, I made it a point to go in there and, and have a cup of coffee and, and look out the window and see my old neighborhood as though it's a museum exhibit. So I was waiting in line to get my coffee, and of course, this is one of the, as Marjorie pointed out, this is one of those places where it takes 45 minutes to get a cup of coffee because you and all that. And so I'm in line, and I'm reaching for my wallet, and the woman is there, and I, you know, I thought I would share with her that this is a special place to me, and I said, hey, uh, how long have you been open? And she says, oh, a few weeks. And I said, you know, I, I grew up in Cambridge, and I went to Longfellow School, kindergarten through the eighth grade, and I said, if you look out at the courtyard, you see the bust of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. If you look at that classroom just to the left, that's the classroom I was sitting in on November 22nd, 1963, when Mr. Foley, our principal, came over the loudspeaker to announce that President Kennedy had been shot and I'm pointing up at it, and I turn and look at her, and she says, it, will it be anything else? <laughs> I'm telling this important story about my life, and this woman just had her head down, and she had zero interest in my tall tale about growing up in Cambridge. So I, I walk in here this morning. Now, Marjorie, I happen to have known literally since she was a newborn baby, literally. This is a famous story that my sister and I were walking down the street and Kathy, uh, Marjorie's mom, is wheeling this newborn baby up the street and Kathy and my sister Joan were best friends. And they start talking, oh, let me see, and they're talking crap that girls talk. And I'm, st I'm like 14 in my hand. And so I said, well, can I walk the baby? This is a true story. So I, I, I walked the baby from the corner of Prospect and Broadway, where the old SO gas station is, down to Harvard Street by Jackson Gardens. And I turned around and walked the baby back. And then I, I met Marjorie years later. And we, we, I think you called me. You were working for Alice Wolf. Is, is that OK that I say that? Yes. OK. <laughs> and, 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 um, and, and she said she's from Cambridge. And I said, oh, what are your parents' names? And she says, well, my. Uh, my mother's name was Curly, and I said, well, I knew a Kathy Curly, and, and Marjorie said, well, that's my mom. So uh, as that jumping off point, when I came in here this morning, and Marjorie came up to me, and she introduced me to Greg, and Greg, as it happens, play, has played basketball. He goes to Harvard now. Um, he played basketball in the courtyard at Longfellow School, where I played stickball and street hockey with the, remember the orange ball and all? And, and he, he lives at Fayette Street. My family owned the house at Fayette Park. And to walk in here and just to have a conversation about my old neighborhood 
with somebody who's genuinely interested in what I have to say <laughs> makes this all worthwhile. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Anthony. This is, this is, this is the 27th Gallucci, Galluccio breakfast. 27th, right? Yeah. OK, that means it's the 27th year that Tony V and I have walked in here and looked at each other and gone, ugh. And it's not that we don't love Anthony. It's why we love Anthony. It's not that we don't love you, because I mean, I look out here and I see Louis de Pasquale, I see George Hines, I see Marjorie, I remember Steve McAuliffe I've seen here in the years past, all these people that I have a history with from over the years. So I love you and I love Anthony. Same with Tony. The problem is that Tony is a comedian. He works at night. I'm a sports writer. I work nights. A typical night for me on a Friday night is doing a Celtics game and getting to bed at 2.30 in the morning. Do you have any idea what it's like getting to bed, writing on deadline, getting to bed at 2.30 in the morning, and then have to get up and put a clean shirt on and come in here and smile? <laughs> and, 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 Tony, and, and Tony always makes fun of himself, makes fun of himself because he, his act doesn't go over well here. I can tell you, well, first of all, he's correct. It doesn't go over well here. And, and that's because 80% of the people in this room are under the age of 21. It's, it's Saturday morning. And you cannot get a comedian to do his best stuff in front of a room full of under 21-year-olds at 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning. That just, that just doesn't work. I've seen Tony's act. If you have not seen Tony's act, Google Tony. You will crack a rib, trust me. It may be not stuff you want to tell to mom when you get home, but it's, it's good stuff. Um, before I sit down, uh, Coach Abreu is here. And I, I need to make note of the fact that we were rival coaches once <clears throat> in the Cambridge Bay Ruth League. And Louis De Pasquale coached the Curtin Insurance Indians. This is how I even know the sponsors. I coached the Leachmere Sales Orioles. Uh, George Weber, Homestead in Red Sox, and if anyone knows where the Homestead Inn was, I'll give you an award. Okay. Anyone know where the Homestead Inn was? No? That's how, that's how old we are. Uh, Fresh Pond. Um, and so, uh, so we were all Babe Ruth coaches. Now, I can't speak for Louie. Louie may be Connie Mack for all I know, but I was an umpire, and I was and am a baseball historian. That's my stock and trade. If you want to talk about the 1946 Red Sox and the 69 Mets and all of that, I, I am your guy. And I used to cover Bill, uh, Louis' beloved Yankees. And the first time I met Billy Martin in spring training in 1988, I mentioned some facet of history. And Billy fell in love with me, actually took me out one night because he wanted to hear all my baseball stories. But the intricacies of the game were, were never my forte. My idea of coaching was, kid that can throw strikes, you're going to pitch. The best overall player, as long as you're not left-handed, you're going to put you at shortstop. If you play like me, you're going to go to right field. And, and, and that's how I coach baseball. And I would hit a round of balls, you know, coming down, you know, and all that. And then we'd start the game. Louie did kind of that, too. George Weber did that. Dick Looney with the Yankees did that. that. That's how you go. The Cambridge Chronicle Sun Tigers, by the way. Um, and this guy is like the Vince Lombardi of Babe Ruth baseball. He's down there with the chalk and the, and the thing, the box and one defense, and you're going to shade to the left, and we're going to do the hidden ball trick and all that. And, and this, anybody who was around in that era, well, this, this is not like a party favor I'm delivering this morning. This is, this is fact. A lot of us ran, managed baseball teams. This guy coached baseball teams. And, and I did not know until last night that he was being honored today. Um, he is, without a doubt, in the long, glorious history of the Cambridge Bay Ruth League, one of the best coaches this league's ever produced. This is probably a good time for me to point out that the 1978 Leachmere Sales Orioles demolished Louis de Pasquale's Curtin Insurance Indians in the finals to win the championship. But that's, that's another story for another day. Um, thank you very much for inviting me. And thank you for inviting me home to Cambridge. Thank you. Well, the reason Steve and Tony are here every year is because they're part of this family. 
and there is something about youth sports and tradition that matters. As you honor the coaches and, and folks here that are contributing to young people in the city, we're also saying, can you give us a few more years? Because I will assure you that if you leave, there is nobody like you who will replace you. And every year we say, that's it, I'm done, I can't do another year. There is nobody that will replace you that can do what you do. So just hang in there and today's a day we say thank you. I'd like to have George Hines come on up because I want to I wanna recognize uh, Paul Abreu at this time. Here's what I'm going to say about Paul Abreu. We were at our Babe Ruth uh, annual meeting, which is pretty much a pay-per-view event. If it were on TV, we'd raise millions of dollars. Uh, it, is, it is comical and it, it is eventful. And we're sitting there at Petucci's trying to figure out some things for the league. And I said, Paul, how many years have you been doing this? And he said, I started in 1966. So process that, 1966. Um, he is still to this day a coach and treasurer for Babe Ruth. He's the reason we have summer baseball. Paul's the one who inspires us and organizes Lou Tompkins and makes sure that you have a place to play every year. So from 1966 to today, he's been given everything he has to youth baseball in Cambridge. Louie, I'm gonna have you come up too. Um, jo Paul has refused this award probably 15 years in a row. And this year I said, Paul, I've had it, enough's enough. You belong on that list. You're a legend, we have to honor you. So um, it's, it's pretty cool to have you here, my friend. George, come on up. Louie, come on up. I know Paul's not going to have a long speech, so you can say it for him. Good morning, everybody. I want to tell you, it's awful hard to follow Buck, listening to Gooch, reading the bio. The man's done everything. I've been with him since 1998, coaching in Babe Ruth. I've learned more from this man than anybody as far as baseball, how to treat young men, how to get them to be team players, understand that they're better than they really think they are. He's just been unbelievable. What a mentor he has been to me. And I just want to say you earned this. It's well-deserved. And I hope I can continue to coach with you a few more years. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Okay, we're working, yeah. So when Anthony asked me to say a few words, it, it was a real privilege for me because I became a Babe Ruth coach in 1975. I was 21 years old, and the president, Mario DePero, who was a dear mentor, really wasn't sure if a 21-year-old kid should be coaching kids that age. Buck started in 75, but he's a lot older than me, so they allowed him in. But Mario gave me one advice. He said, follow the lead of Paul Abreu. And I'll never forget that. And I've been following that lead for a long time. Paul Abreu has meant to Babe Ruth League more than we can ever tell you. But I think one of the best examples of what Paul brought to Babe Ruth League is my best friend is now 65 years old. In this week, he spoke to me for a half hour about his coach when he was playing Babe Ruth League and how he had just ran into him and how important he meant to his life and how important he's been to the success of his career. And that was Frank Vitagliano. And Paul, that's what you've done for the kids you've coached. You've advised them, you've stayed with them, you've worked with them, and you've been a special person in their life. And to do Babe Ruth League as long as you have, you and George Alexander are the foundation of why that program is a success it can be. And when I was president, I'm going to tell you the first person who was officially, unofficially in involved in every decision I made was Paul Abreu. Whenever you asked him to, what he could do, he was there. So Paul is really about coaching, but then taking it to the next level and being special. And I just want to say that when, I, when Paul was coaching, I know one of the proudest moments was when his son got to play three years for him. It was special. But I didn't realize, because I have long and since out of Babe Ruth League, that he recently told me he got a chance to coach his grandson in Babe Ruth League, too. And I can't imagine, Paul, how many coaches can say they coach their son and their grandson. So thank you for all you've done in Babe Ruth. He was also my first boss as an umpire. So, Paul, thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here. Paul, Paul, come on up. Um, I couldn't find your award because I forgot I ordered a different award. This is a Lifetime Achievement Award. I thought 1966 to today, that's a lifetime. So let's hear it for Paul Abreu.
Boots just said I have two minutes. I don't know what I can do in two, but I would, first thing, I would like to thank my wife. I, she's been my best friend and has supported me throughout so many years. I don't want to say how many years. She's the person that kept the boat sailing straight on the water and has assisted me in everything I do. Carol, stand up. Carol, stand up. <clears throat> it's not usual for me to get up and speak, especially get teary-eyed, like I am right now. Three of these gentlemen on the dais here have coached with me. And of course, George has been with me for a thousand years. I would just like to spend one minute to introduce my head table. My wife, Carol. <laughs> My two children, my daughter Kim, and my son, Darren. Three of my five grandchildren, Tyler, Darren Jr., and Ella. Unfortunately, two of my other grandchildren were unavailable for today. Joseph and Hannah. It has, it has been a long ride. I, I've had a lot of fun. And when I was thinking of this coming down here, I think I wrote a speech. I did, but it's 15 minutes long. And Gooch said, no way. Uh, but I... I would like to say an Achievement Award is very powerful to me, and I'd like to share that with all the coaches that have worked with me, current and past, in the Babe Ruth League. They have been many. There's three of them right here. And also, another shout out, shout out for the Cambridge Little League coaches, who I believe without them, there probably would not be a Babe Ruth League. I'm gonna wrap it up, I'm gonna wrap it up now, I'll wrap it up. In conclusion, I wanna say this is, it has been a great ride for me. I've really enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun. And I, when I talk to new or young coaches and they ask me if I have any advice, I simply say to them, keep it simple. Teach the basic fundamentals of baseball, sprinkling a few social tips, and most importantly, keep the game fun. As I go into the sunset of my career, I wish all well. I just happened to look out over the audience, and I do see a few more coaches, and actually I see a few of my players here today the Yankees, and it's been a privilege and an honor for me to work with the youth of Cambridge. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Paul, take, Paul, take this. Take this. Thank you, Paul. That was awesome. Give him another round of applause.
Real, real quick, I don't want to try, oh, first of all, I want to thank my sister Lowe for being here. I want to tell a quick story. I looked out and I see this young man and it kind of makes me, sometimes you forget why you do things and you do. You just, you, 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 you stick to your, your routine and you know what you have to do and I, you try to be disciplined, but you forget the things that you're accomplishing and the impact you're having along the way. I look out in the audience, I see a young man who showed up at our um, youth baseball pro clinic three years ago. He could barely throw the ball. Unfortunately, when you're Dominican, people expect you to be able to play baseball. And I can attest to you that that is not always true. I work with Dominican Little Leagues. There are, there are young uh, men and women who are not gifted athletes. Not to say this man isn't a gifted athlete, but he's a much more gifted personality. And he's become a big part of youth sports. And I think those who helped out at that clinic, Teddy Downing and others, you should take a little credit for this. Bruce Bird, stand up and give us a wave, buddy. Roos! That a boy, Roos. Also, also his, his, his mother would actually come and sit in the dugout at games, and she would bring us empanadas. So, en serio, tú quieres comida para almuerzo, invitarse por Roos Bird, por juego por tu equipo. Gracias, Roos Bird. Don't get a big head either. Don't get a big head now. Uh, the next person, I want to have Joe Pags come up. We're moving here. We're going to keep Joe Pags come up. So this is a very special award for me because I think, and why do you remember this? When we were starting out in sports, like you want, I don't know, winning's important. You want Cambridge to win every state championship. You know, we grew up in the Pat Ewing era. We, we, we wanted Cambridge to, to excel and crush everybody. And when you're, when you're younger, you want uh, coaches and those who manage athletics to be like the biggest sports people of all time. And you start to realize, and I think Paul is a great example of this, and this next person is too, what you really want is really good people who really care about people, who are really human, who can see that people, young people and adults are not perfect, and we all have challenges, and we get better and we improve over the course of our lives. And we need people around us who recognize that and give us second chances. And this person happened to be uh, my gym teacher when I was at the PV school, and just so you know what it's like to be my gym teacher, I never wanted to put that foolish uniform on. You were not getting me to take a shower after gym class. And she was an absolute peach. She was just a great person, and she's part of our memories at the Peabody School as a phys ed teacher. As an athletic director, she was one of the kindest human beings that the kids could have and the coaches could have. And I look back and I think about what it is to be an athletic director and what we need in an athletic director. You just need an incredibly kind human being who cares about kids, coaches, and families. And that, that's Mary Ann Capello. I'm really proud to be able to be part of this today. I want to have Joe Pag say a couple words. Uh, he goes way back uh, with Mary Ann Capello. Come on, Joe. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm just going to be short and sweet. I know you want to get home and watch the Belmont race. Um, a couple of things. I, I've been teaching and coaching in Cambridge for a long, long time. My first athletic director was Joe Kozlowski, who's a big, big star at, at Boston College. And I've coached under Tommy Uria for a long time, too. Um, maybe 10, 15 athletic directors I've served under. It takes a long time to do that. And the closest one to my heart, and uh, I'd say my favorite all time, is Marianne Capello. She's done a magnificent job in her tenure as a teacher, as an AD, and as a person in a good guide, uh, guidance person for many of the young people that came before her in the Cambridge Public Schools, particularly the girls. Uh, you can read the little paragraph about her 
Uh, she just grabbed me and she said that it was the boys volleyball, volleyball team, not the girls. That's how she, she crosses, uh, she dots the I's and crosses the T's all the time. She's a magnificent AD, magnificent person. Um, another thing that she has on her resume, and I got close to her with, not just as a coach, but the Cambridge Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, it started in, I believe, 2009. There were five events, and they wouldn't be a Cambridge Athletic Hall of Fame without Mary Ann Capello. Uh, someday, some young men and women sitting in this uh, auditorium, uh, maybe they'll have a chance to get into the Hall of Fame someday. Uh, but besides the Hall of Fame contenders and people like Patrick Ewing and whatever, and some of the great teams, uh, Mary Ann was an advocate for the person that just came out and tried to play a sport, whether they were successful or not, as long as they tried. And they were the person that could come to see her and confide in her. Again, a uh, wonderful person, wonderful teacher. I'm proud to be associated with her. Mary Ann? Yep, yep. Good morning. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the Galuccio Associates, for nominating me. And uh, congratulations to the other honorees that are up here. Congratulations to the scholarship winners. All about my 35-year career in Cambridge was all about the student to make sure they had fun, they enjoyed themselves in physical education class. And when I came a became AD, it was all about the student athlete. And I used to have coaches say to me, Miriam, it's February vacation. What are you doing here? I says, no, kids have a track meet. I have to be here. I have to watch them. They said, none of the other ADs ever came to anything. I said, well, I'm not any of the other ADs. I said, I'm Miriam, and I'm here to support my student athletes and my coaches. And I had some wonderful, wonderful coaches. Joe Pag was one. Kelly Larry in the back. I. I had her in kindergarten. We're going back a long, long time. So, But the coaches were unbelievable, and uh, everyone that I worked with was really very, very good to me. But once again, it was all about the student and the student athlete. Uh, I do want to give a plug to the um, Athletic Hall of Fame. We haven't met since COVID. We are meeting again in September. If anyone in the audience is interested in joining our group, please see me afterwards. Or if you have an athlete, a coach, a team, or a special contributor to nominate, please do so because we're looking for applications. People you know, see you on the street and they'll say, oh gee, I'd like to nominate John Smith. I said, that's great, here, you know, go to the website and get an application. People don't want to do all the work. It's not that difficult, but please do, and we really, really appreciate it. And Anthony, thank you for the honor, I appreciate it. And Anthony and I go back a, a long, long time. Have a great day, thank you again. At this time, I want to have uh, someone who goes way back, in fact, was part of the original group uh, to help Pop Wanna get started. Donnie Harding, come on up. Donnie, why don't you make your way up? Uh, the next awardee is someone who is so multifaceted, it's difficult to describe, which is um, why we call it a special recognition, because there's so many special things this person has done. I've known him for over 30 years. I've watched him um, be a great father and mentor to so many kids across the city, including Derek, who I think we all know, he couldn't be here today. But from ref and basketball games, and I don't know how it is today, but our summer hoop games used to get real heated. And uh, Fats had a way to keep the peace. Um, you may have seen him walking with the kids when they're in that line where they are all on a, on a string. Like, that's the memory I have. Lissa, you know, Fats from, from, from Haggerty. Um, but Fats Harris has been a legend in Cambridge. He is a legend in Cambridge. Uh, and today we, we get a chance to say thank you to Fats. You can read his bio. I, I get into a lot of the teams he went on the road with and coached. Uh, today's our day to give a heartfelt thank you to Fats Harris. Donnie, I, I thought it would be great for you to say a few words about Fats as well. Donnie Harding, give it up. Thank you. 
Um, before I begin, one of the people who never gets recognized, nobody ever says anything, for 27 years, can we give a round of applause to Anthony for what he's done for the past 27 years? I had to. Uh, my bio, if I gave a bio of, of Ron and us together, we'd be here all day. Anthony told me that I only had a minute and a half, so I can't do that. Um, Ron was my first basketball captain. We played in high school together. He was a captain, and he played hard. He was he, and and, and he was intense. Um, the thing with Ron is. Most of the young people here know him. He worked in the preschool. He works in the after school, the teen programs. He coached kids. And he's very direct. He, he's very direct in what he does. He didn't expect much of everybody. He's a disciplinarian for the most part. And all he expected everybody to do was to know what your responsibility was and be self-disciplined. Be self-disciplined whether you were playing sports or self-disciplined if you were walking down the street, meeting different people, seeing adults, looking at, people, looking at people in their eyes and shaking their hands. Those were the simple things, and it, 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 it is a simple thing for people to do, but there was nobody, and, and really, I'm just going off the cuff. I could talk for Ron, about Ron for two hours if you gave me the chance, but... There's nobody more respected. I'm surprised that it took this long for him to get an award because <laughs> he's the guy. He's, he's the guy. Everybody knows him. He may be misunderstood, but when we started the Pop Warner program and, and things had to happen and we had to have people in line very, very quick, he got everybody in line from the first day, sat everybody around, and and just told the kids, boys and girls, this is what we expect of Cambridge kids, this is what you're gonna do, and we want you to do it in a professional way. So with that, I just wanna introduce Ron Fats Harris, well deserved. absolutely love me. I'm going to put my 30 seconds on my watch here. Listen, I'd like to thank everyone who came out here, especially thanks to my family, my Auntie Barbara, my cousin Cheryl, my brother Ed and his wife Yvonne, my adopted son Gio, my good friend Vlad, Shay, Leroy, everyone here, thank you for coming out. Uh, that's about all that I really have. Uh, one thing, one thing I ask everyone to do, could everyone stand up for a quick second? Everyone. Unless you have a walker or a cane, just everyone else stand up. One thing, I'd just like everyone to clap five times. I just want to see how it was to get a standing ovation. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Fats, take this. I just want to announce now, with a speech that short, Fats will be getting the award again next year. So just know, if you're on the guest list, you'll be, you'll be on the list again for Fats next year. You're the best, Fats. Uh, oh, real quick. So there was a young man who was like trying, you, you forget someone? Yes, I forgot. All right. Someone really important. Go ahead. i also like to say a special thank you for my daughter-in-law to be Vanessa Fisher. There was a young man who uh, a coach told me might not be coming back to his team this year and asked me if I could call their home and encourage him to keep playing. And uh, to me, look, you guys have all coached. When you look at your team at the end of the year and you see one or two kids that you know wouldn't have played if you didn't keep chasing them, calling the house, knocking the door, and telling them we need you, that's what it's all about. And so, uh, and the, one of the key things when I made the call was he said, yeah, but my birthday's coming. 
And I was like, well, when's your birthday? And he said, June 11th. And I said, dude, that's my birthday too, so you come back to the Pirates, and I'll be at your birthday party on June 11th. Max and the Pirates, stand up, please, will you? All the, all, even better, all the young people who play a sport in Cambridge, please stand up right now. Good job getting up this morning. Don't be late for your 1230 game. Ka Kara. Come on up. I want to have Kyra Brown come up, who's been a huge part of our. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I am here to introduce Bella. Um, she is a former athlete. Uh, played hockey and softball. I kept trying to dig up some dirt on her and I just could not find anything. <laughs> but she is one of those kids that, um, that I really enjoyed watching because she had such, such good energy. On the ice, wherever she was, she had this really good energy and you just had joy in watching her. So you'd see her fly around the ice, come hauling off, and then just couldn't wait to get back on there again. Um, so I, I, when she graduated, I was thinking, oh darn, we're gonna really miss this kid on the ice. And then sure enough, she came back and started coaching in that same energy. So I'm, I'm, I stand on the, the bench and she's in front of me opening the door to let the players come on and off in that same exact energy. And if she had something to say to someone on the ice, she was leaning over, yelling, yelling to someone to tell them what they should be doing, or if they did a great job, she was letting them know. So it was really fun to watch her coaching as well. So the, the piece that is so great for us, I think all of us can speak on it, is that when kids play here and then they come back and they participate and they coach again and they give back, it's really a special thing to see. So um, as much as I was trying to get some dirt on her, I could not. And YOLO, I think a lot of people know, Yuleska Ramirez, um, I reached out to her and she said, darn, I can't can't think of anything specific. I just remember her always being funny and bringing energy to the team every day. Um, and, and sometimes even being funny when she didn't realize she was being funny. <laughs> and that's something that I really notice every day working alongside her now. So this is Bella Cortione. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, well, I'm definitely not a public speaker. Some of my athletes are here. They can definitely attest to that. Um, but I just want to say thank you, um, Glutrio Associates, Whitey, thank you. And congratulations to everybody else receiving an award today. Um, yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Perfect. Also, before I forget, all the past honorees, uh, please stand up so we can recognize you. Donnie, I know you are. All the past honorees, stand up, please. <laughs> Louis. Thank you. Also, quick, I want to thank Dwayne uh, Santos. I just got to give him a special shout out. The dude. Always, always, always there for, for us when we need them. Also, Ted, Renee, Kathy, obviously my mom, Lula, who did a great job. Lou D, Cheryl, 
Debbie Gentili was late, so I, I can't really give her a big thanks, but she was late. Also, Paul Sullivan, my college roommate, we slept next to each other on mattresses for four years, and he's the original white man can't jump right there. Paul Sullivan. No one overachieved more than Paul Sullivan at basketball. Sully, great to have you here. At, at, uh, at this time, uh, let's see. No, no. Shay, you, I'm making you wait because you got up six times because you couldn't, you couldn't pay attention. <laughs> just, like, just like Sabi and Nico, just stay seated. <laughs> I'm gonna have uh, Scott, with Scott, come on up. Let's get, let's get, let's get Walshy recognized. <laughs> so, I have competed against this young man and for those of you, I know it's sick because even when we're coaching minors, whatever age group it is, we want to win. We do. And we want, the, we want the kids to excel. And I have coached next to him for a number of years. His energy, you can tell how much he wants his kids to, to do well. And I have walked by the, the batting cages more times and seen Walshy in there. And it's always with... Uh, a young athlete who needs extra repetitions, who needs more attention. And for those of you who have coached Little League, you know your team is only as good as that young person who needs to improve. It's not your best player. Your best player is going to be there. And Walshy is possessed by making sure those kids get the attention they need. Um, Bobby Goodwin, who uh, was an honoree, we had a great talk this week, which was awesome. I was zen-like after we, we hung up the phone. He was an inspiration to Walsh. He couldn't be here because he's got family duties today. Um, but I, I want to have Scott Slater, who's a past honoree, who coaches with Walsh right now, come on up and say a few words. Thanks, Thanks So Billy, Billy and I have been spending a lot of time together last few months on the field, right? We're there at least four times a week. And, um, you know, he's been coaching baseball in West Cambridge since 1995, when his son, Ryan, who's here, was six years old and on the Cubs. My son came on a couple years later, which is when I met Billy, and we, we've pretty much both been there ever since. Um, <laughs> He puts in an incredible amount of time um, with the Cubs, especially with his teaching him his specialty, which is the art of hitting. And they, they know him, all, all the Cubs know him in a way much differently than how they know me. They have a real individual, intense relationship with him. Um, they love and value his attention. It's, it's really wonderful for as all the head coaches in this room know, it's wonderful to have people helping you like that, especially with baseball when it's really useful to have stations. So I, yeah, I love working with Billy. We have a lot of fun, you know, on and off the field. I'm gonna let him talk about himself rather than right. talk about it. But I just wanna say, mention that in Billy's spare time besides coaching baseball for the past 28 years, he coached hockey for 14 years. Come on, Billy. <laughs> Well, I didn't prepare a speech, but uh, I'd like to congratulate all the recipients here and past recipients uh, and the scholarship recipients. I'd like to thank Scott, the Gooch, and Galuccio Associates for all they've done for the uh, youth of this great city of ours, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'd like to thank the Cubbies that showed up with their parents. I've been on this team for a long time. I'd like to thank my, son, my children who showed up, my son Ryan, his lovely wife Kelly, my daughter Molly, and my son Connor, who were all all played on the Cubs and were fun athletes to coach. 
But really, that's about it. I'd like to thank everyone who's here. I'm very honored and humbled, and thank you. Also want to recognize school committee member Aisha Wilson, who's here. Thank you for being here. I do have to mention, Walshie, that award was named in honor of my, my, one of my best friends in life, Julio Lugo, who passed away. His wife was ecstatic to see that we did that award for Julio, um, and he would love you. So I just wanted to say that. Um, Bella, I, I did want to mention Trevor nominated you. He's been up for four nights sleepless because he thought he had to make a speech and Kara stepped. Ste he's not like Whitey. He stepped in for him. So Trevor, no, I want to seriously thank you for nominating. Um, also, a young man that I started with uh, as a freshman, they said he was too skinny. He'd never be quarterback. And we had a lot of, lot of days pushing him to lift weights and get bigger, faster, stronger. Now he's an associate with Galuccio and Watson, Ray Doucette. What, what he's going to learn from me, I, I, I got to be honest, I don't know. Uh, and he's become coachable, so that's another great, that's another great thing. Uh, Cambridge Youth Soccer, uh, as all of us know, uh, continues to grow every year. Gets bigger, engages more young people, uh, and has become a model program for the city. Um, Jason Targoff nominated John. We, we're big supporters of youth soccer. We love working collaboratively with them. Collaboratively with them. Uh, and I just want to say a couple words. Um, we talked a little bit about middle schools. I think we all know we need to do more at the middle school level. When I was in middle school, we had 12 to 15 games. Think about that. In each sport, it was a great feeding ground for the high school. Um, we'd have citywide championships. It was, it was a big, big deal. We need to do more there. John formed the co and coordinated the Middle School Girls League, which is a mixed gender upper school league. Co he's coordinated the grade seven and eighth city league. He also helped build partnership with CRLS soccer, which we know how meaningful it is when young athletes get to meet high school athletes. And for the high school athletes that are there, you better know that you're an example for those kids. And sometimes I'm hard on my players related to things like language and character and how you conduct yourself. That's because there's a seven or eight year old kid watching you and looking up to you. They wanna, they wanna be like you. When I was a kid, every kid that was four or five years older than me, I idolized. So when you hear me coming down on you, that's because there's a kid watching you. Um, John, John also sits on the board, uh, board of Cambridge Youth Soccer, uh, and today we get a chance uh, to thank him for all his work in support of youth sports in Cambridge, John Delancey. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so thank you, Anthony. It's an honor to be here today. Um, when I started coaching my daughter's team, as many of you did, or your son's team, I expected to do it for a couple of years. And 16 years later, I'm still here, still doing it. And I think that's because of three things. One, working with terrific coaches. Two, great partnerships, as Anthony said. One with uh, Coach Meg Willett at the high school. Uh, we're working to get more girls uh, interested in high school soccer. And the final one is the best one, working with the wonderful kids of Cambridge and all their chaotic and <laughs> boundless energy and brilliant play. Uh, quick, a quick, couple of quick words, uh, good news about Cambridge Youth Soccer to pick up what you were saying. Uh, I'd like to thank Jason Targoff and Sandy Gould. A few years ago, they had the courage to dramatically reimagine Cambridge Youth Soccer. The reorganization was somewhat controversial. Uh, the results are not, they're amazing. Uh, this weekend, almost 2,000 kids will, be, will lace up their boots and play soccer at Danahee and other parts. That's 2,000. But, but, and I say this as a uh, coach of girls soccer, the better part is today we have over 700 girls playing soccer. 
just uh, four years ago, we struggled to get 400, so we're up 75%. We have 700 girls. It's amazing. It's exciting, but it's also a good start, and I guarantee there will be more to come. Uh, finally, I'd like to say thank you to my wife, Helena, who has put up with me disappearing on so many Saturdays to do what I do to coach soccer and be a volunteer. So thank you. And thank you. Well, I'm gonna have you come up, I'm gonna have you come back up. And it's funny, a few people mentioned, uh, you know, why didn't you give the award to Fats or Leroy or this person early? And you know what happens? People become your friends, you're doing the same stuff every year, you're fighting the same fights, and you forget that you haven't said thank you to them. And I think that's true for me, um, for Leroy, Fats, and certainly Shay. I'm just gonna say quickly, um, dealing with parents is not easy if you're a youth sports coach. I'm just gonna be honest, and no disrespect, but every child thinks, every parent thinks their child should be the pitcher, the shortstop, the, and, and, it, and it's hard. And I'll be the same way, I'm sure. There are certain parents who, you know they struggle with those same uh, challenges because you want your kid to be on the, the field every inning and you want your kid to be um, in the limelight. And there are certain parents who you, you know practice self-awareness and understand that they have to be part of a whole and that we have to be part of a team. And by behaving that way, their children behave like part of a team and become the kind of kids that make your team better because they're supporting all the kids on the team and they're not the ones that are me, me, me. There's a little bit of me, 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 Nico and Sabi, trust me. <laughs> but, but not only that. When Cambridge needed a girls softball coach, you guys probably know the history of that and what happened with that program with Shea. I, rem I remember the Bobcats and when Cambridge girls youth softball was really flourishing and growing, what a big part of uh, Shea was with that. Came, when, when Cambridge is playing and right field is lit up, and I'm, I'm not gonna get into details on what sort of activity goes on out there, but I know that's old school. That's when the other team from Medford or Winchester looks out and goes, damn, people are really into this game. That's the Cambridge I remember playing at Donnelly Field when our people came out in force and with passion. Shay's that, that uh, cheerleader for our city, for, for all of our kids. The last thing I'm gonna just say quickly, and I'll say this about Whitey too, it's hard being a cop right now. And I'm not making excuses for police officers. As my mother used to say to me when I complained about having to go out and do something as a city councilor, she'd say, nobody asked you to do it. That was, nobody begged you to do it. So I'm not making excuses, but it's, it's a hard job. And to have police officers whose primary responsibility is their relationship with kids makes this city a better place. And I know there are other, not to get, there are other police officers who look down at that kind of approach, who think it's all about arresting people and locking people up and labeling kids. And then we have police officers who are primarily there to defend our kids and make sure that they're getting better. What, Whitey, come on up. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have Whitey help me introduce Shay. First of all, just to prove that uh, Fats is a disciplinarian, anybody that's ever played for him or when he, when he ref the basketball uh, game, you'll know this. He's told me to tuck my shirt in three times as I've passed him. <laughs> if, if you can't play, at least look like a player. <laughs> But uh, this one's a real easy one for me, because this is my guy. Um, he's so much more than a coach. Uh, to watch him uh, work with his children, uh, cheer for his children, he's at every game, every field. I would say that the Santoses are now the first family of Cambridge sports. <laughs> I'll let the bio speak for itself, but one thing I will say, and um, Ms. Capella brought it up earlier, is that 
This gentleman, and it doesn't say it in the, I don't know how it escaped the bio, but he's a CRLS Hall of Famer, so let's give it up. So it's been a pleasure to work with him. It's been a pleasure to be his friend, uh, a fellow sports parent. Uh, he's a great family man. Salt of the earth. Please give it up for my friend, Chase Santos. Uh, last but not least, that's what they say, right? I'm sure I'm not last because my son's team is playing Gooch's in the playoffs tomorrow. I'm sure that's not why. I'm sure that's not why, Gooch. Um, I know that I'm last and we're supposed to get out of here at 11, so I'll forget the speech for the most part. Um, there's a bunch of people out here that I want to say thank you to, people that I've talked to over the years about sports and life, like Leroy. I can hear my voice, so I don't want to start crying, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the one person that I really wanted to shout out today was my wife. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, so I wanted to thank you, and I wrote down a bunch of things. So I want to thank you for all the drop-offs and pickups throughout the years, buying snacks, sitting in the cold, dealing with my attitude after we lose. <laughs> Letting me party with the boys after we win, you know? <laughs> Early morning practices, late night games, registration, signups, group texts, carpooling, donations, all that stuff. Um, but I want to thank you for being there for me. Um, you have to listen to Nico talk about how fast he is. <laughs> you got to listen to Savi talk about how he's the best pitcher in the league. Che brag about how he's the best outfielder in the family, when we know that's Aaron. <laughs> Especially this season when you had to uh, take all the phone calls from Tati about the CRLS softball team. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Sorry, Nazia. Um, shout out to Toast Nation, of course, everybody. Everyone that came to support me, I appreciate you. And then the last thing, um, Laban, Smitty, and Nazia all people that I've coached in the past. I was here when I was 17 years old in your seat. <clears throat> and I just wanted to say something that I wish someone said to me, which was, don't ever give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your dreams. Go out there and do good things. And when you come back, give back to your community and pay it back, man. Donnie, I literally remember being in, being in Somerville at a Pop Warner playoff game and you saying, you, you don't know who that is? I watched Shea run for like four touchdowns. I'm like, who is that kid? And Donnie's like, oh, you don't know who Shea Santos is? So it, go, it goes way, way back um, with Shea. Nico, I'm just going to say this once. There's witnesses. Question me on a take sign this summer and you're off the team. <laughs> And listen, for all the other, if, if there are players from other, this is the take sign. I don't care who knows. That's the take. I got it from Louie. Louie taught me that one. It's the most obvious sign there could be, and it, it works. All right. Hey, scholar athletes, Glutio Associates this year, uh, we increased the scholarship amount to 1500 um, We have... 1400 uh, 12 or 14, I gotta, I gotta count. Um, I wanna introduce them, and I wanna thank, Luam is out of town, she helped coordinate, and obviously you all know Lula, give it up for her.
Let's have all the scholarship winners come on up at this time. Liban, Nazia, Jarrell, come on, Mohammed, Kylie, Sadie, Sam, Ania, Yerosin, Fred Lugo, Anna O'Brien, James Smythe. This is our last order of business, and this is the best part. I'm going to have each, each recipient just come up. Uh, if you're not sure what you're doing next year, it's all good. We got your back. Uh, but give your name and what your intentions are um, for next year. We'll start with Anna. Come on up. Yeah, just that's all. No speech. You just, you're good. Um, I will be attending UMass Amherst, where I'll be studying vet technology. And I'm super honored. Thank you. Oh, I'm Otto Byrne. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellie. I'm going to Bowdoin College next year. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kylie Bernard, and I'll be attending Boston College next year, where I'll be running track and fields. I'm Jarrell, and I'm going to Bridgeton Academy next year. I'm Sadie Danilik. I'm going to Plymouth State, and I'm playing hockey. My name is Fred, and I will be going to Bunker Hill and playing basketball. I'm Ania, and I'll be going to Middlebury College next year. Uh, my name is LeBron, and I'll be attending Bridgeton Academy and play football. My name is James Smythe, and I'm going to Mass Maritime for Facilities Engineering, so. Hello, my name is Nabil, and I'm taking a gap year. My name is Samuel, and I'm going to Grinnell College. Hi, my name is Arison, and I will be attending UConn. Hi, I'm Nazia, and I'll be going to Allen University and playing softball. Also want to recognize, uh, last year, uh, Louis Di Pasquale retired as city manager, and he was generous enough to donate proceeds from his retirement party uh, to Galuccio Associates, so we set up a separate account. Louis, why don't you come up? Uh, Ellie and Kevin Leal were recipients of uh, the Di Pasquale Scholarship. This year. I don't know if Kevin's parents are here. We go way back. Kevin's uh, away, so he couldn't be here. But I want to recognize uh, that those were part of the Deep Pasquale Scholarships. Louie, come on up. Thank you, Anthony. I'll be brief. But, you know, when I was city manager, I constantly said, and I was very proud of it, as someone who's lived in the city their entire life, there is no better place to live, to grow up, to work in the city of Cambridge. And, and we all got to recognize that. But one of the reasons we can all say that is because look at the people behind us, these young men and women who will lead the future to keep Cambridge what it is. And that's what Cambridge is all about. We're all in this together. We stick together. We love our city. And when I got the opportunity to give out scholarships, I could not think of any better place to give out scholarships than Galuccio Associates. What Anthony's done for the kids of the city, second to none. I know he doesn't want me to say it, but I'm going to say it. So can we just give him one more huge round of applause? To all the winners, congratulations, especially for the first two winners ever and Kevin. And I'll, and I'll also get the deepest quality award. It means a lot to me to be able to give it to these two special, special, special people, one of which I've known since she was this high. So thank you, everybody, for having me today. Oh, they're right here. They're right here. My 
mother will kill me. So let's give those out, and then we'll, we'll take a picture. The great thing about Louis being retired is he's got absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> so when he was city manager, you couldn't reach him. I mean, you, you, he wouldn't answer your phone. Call. Now, what are you doing for lunch, breakfast? Let's, let's talk about a Little League game for two hours and a half. So it, it, that's what retirement's like. You, you, uh, one, hey, let's get a picture with the scholar athletes. You all, next year, this will come again. And you'll say, oh, it's Saturday morning. Uh, I, I don't know if I can go. Without you, this doesn't keep going. I hope to see all of you at the 28th Annual Youth Sports Recognition Breakfast. We, oh, hold on. And let's give a big thank you to the person who is very conspicuous at all of these events, because he's 6'5", and his camera's even bigger. No, seriously, somebody who's been with me going my first campaign for city council, Frank Munkowitz. Take a picture. We'll move everyone over there. Yeah, real quick. All right, guys, scholars, we're going to go over and take a picture. All right, we'll take the picture. I'll come back. Hey, I'm going to break it there. Thank you for coming, everyone.